So I'm here in downtown Fairbanks, Alaska, right on the Chena River. And I got to tell you, this is just about where Fairbanks was established. You got to look it up. So much awesome history. Anyhow, speaking of history, there's two local restaurateurs who are doing business in this town for a long time. And the big hotel chain came in and they said, we want to open up a restaurant inside of our hotel that's got that local flair, that local attitude and energy. Well, it actually happened. This is Lavelle's Bistro. I got a lobster cake kicking fast. Lavelle's is a treasure in Fairbanks. Potato crusted sockeye salmon. What makes it so special? Just the atmosphere. Everything's from scratch. It's family owned and run. By Kathy Lavelle and Frank Eagle, who opened up shop inside a hotel in 2001, then teamed up with chef Cleveland Kenny. We had been in the restaurant business, then we started catering. People started coming in. It was turning into a little pop-up restaurant, and that attracted somebody from the hotel group? Exactly. Exactly. What kind of food are we doing? It's more of a French dining place, but pineapple to the big apple. That's how I like to say it. About to flame up over here. Watch yourself. This is where you want to go on a Friday or Saturday night, or every night. Or every night. I was going to say, they got meatloaf on the menu on every night. <laughs> Three meatloafs coming at you. The 25 ingredient meatloaf is the best meatloaf you've ever had. So many flavors. It's got vegetables in it. And the demi-glace sauce tops it off. So 25 ingredient meatloaf. Yes, sir. First, we're going to sweat the vegetables. One. One ingredient. That's pomache oil. Onions. Two ingredients. <laughs> Celery. Three. Carrots, red peppers, yellow peppers, orange peppers, garlic, green onion. All right, so nine of the 25. Next step is? The wet mix, starting with cumin, cayenne, thyme, white pepper, garlic, sugar, black pepper, salt, paprika, cilantro, whole eggs, ketchup, half and half. All right. 22 ingredients so far, folks. Everybody keep it up at home? Now we're going to make our meatloaf. We're going to add Italian sausage, certified Angus beef, sweated veg. Now we're going to add our wet mix, panko, now, are you free-forming this, or are we going into pans? I'm free-forming it. I got to beat this thing up. You want to get all the air pockets out of it? Cover with foil in the oven, 350, how long? 18 to 22 minutes. And then we're going to remove that aluminum foil, and then we're going to let it sit in there again for another 12 minutes or so. What do we serve with this dish? We're making a demi glace. Let's start with that. We're making a veal stock with these dinosaur bones. I in like here. it. The veal bones. Absolutely. Got it. Carrot, celery, and onion mix here. Kind of just foil. dumping on there. There we go. I'm ready for you. In the oven. Hour 15 minutes. When you get into something like the demi glace to make it yourself, the flavor difference is just unquestionable. So go in with some water first. Peppercorns, thyme, and my bay leaves. Got it. I want to dilute this tomato paste. This is when the splash is going to start happening. And lastly, the bones. Boil for six hours. Final step, chef. This is reduced significantly. So now I'm going to actually add a demi glace base to it. You're going to fortify it. Fortify it, gotcha. right. So our meatloaf is done. Plate, mashed potatoes, loaves right on top, sides of vegetables, splash of the demi, and it's ready to serve. Cleveland, on Triple D, I think one of the things that people expect to see are dishes like meatloaf. There's something so simple, there's a lot of ways that people could take wrong turns. What you have here is a very tender, well-seasoned, fortified meatloaf. I love the Italian sauce and the ground beef going together. I can see the veggies. They've been sweated down enough, but not too much that they disappear. You got a good ratio of nice crust on the outside of the meatloaf to juicy interior of the meatloaf. When you're going to say, we make 25 ingredient meatloaf, it really better be one of those dishes that people say, hey, when you go up to Fairbanks, this is a place to check out. Sweet. Well done. Thank you. Two meatloafs, table 22. Let's go. Delicious. Nice texture, great flavors. The demi glaze is icing on the cake, and the mashed potatoes are nice. There's and cake in this? <laughs> Firing three lollipop pork chops. This is the first time I've had this pork chop. It's really good. It's always just a beautiful presentation. First dish, we're going to do a lollipop pork chop. We're going to start off with making the brine. I have my water first. Now, when you say lollipop pork chop, it's because you're pulling all the meat off the bone of the chop. Yes, sir. Orange peel, salt, bay leaves, brown sugar, coriander, peppercorn melange. Can you spell that? Melange. M-E-L-Lange. That's how I spell That's it. it. That's how you spell That's it. That's how I spell it. Hit ice to it, let it chill, and then we'll brine the chops. Yes, sir. Let me see these beauties. All of our meats come in fresh. Which is a big deal all the way in Alaska. So they come in trimmed, boom, ready to go. Ready You're not go. sitting here with a little paring knife, skidding back those no, bones. No, don't got okay. time. We put time in here? <laughs> <laughs> How long are we going to brine the chops? Two days. What's going with the chops? Horseradish apricot marmalade. Oiled garlic. Deglaze it with triple sec. A little orange liqueur. Got it. Horseradish. Dijon mustard. Brown sugar. 
Apricot jam. Apricot, not apricot. Apricot, that's what I say. I say, say apricot. apricot. I don't say apricot. Stir it up and let it steep for about 10 to 12 minutes. Make it happen, Captain. All right. Oil of our pan. Black pepper, kosher salt. It has a lot of salt in it already. We don't want to over salt it, so it's just like, ooh, ooh. That's the noise of it doing its thing. Sear one side, flip it. Put a little cube of butter on there. Into the oven at 450 for six to eight minutes. When it comes out, we put fresh brie cheese on top. Let this melt down. Mashed potatoes on a plate, like so. Lollipop pork chop with the melted brie. Put our marm down on there. What's the zucchini being finished with? Just salt and pepper. There we go. Well, anytime you put the brie on anything, I'm good to go. Cleveland, I'll tell you what, buddy. I don't typically order pork chops in restaurants. One of the main reasons is I don't think people cook them, right? The pork chop in particular, the way we raised pork, it needs fat, it needs flavor. The brine is perfect. So there's flavor all the way through this. You get into that salt and that sweet, and you counterbalance it with the funk of the brie and the tang of the horseradish and the tang of the Dijon mustard. And that marmalade just packed with flavor. And the mashed potato is the definition of mashed potato. Right on. I mean, it's delicious, it's balanced. This is definitely a pork chop I would order again. Lollipop pork chop up top, ready? The pork chop is wonderful. Nice glaze on top, very tender pork. Restaurants like Lavelle's, are there a lot of them? No. For special occasions, this is where we come. I love all your enthusiasm. You love cooking. You got your own jam band going on right back here. Good job, buddy.